It may come as a surprise, considering his pivotal role in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, that Saint Joseph is rarely mentioned in the sacred scripture. As we celebrate his feast day this month, it is but fitting to get to know more about the greatest male saint ever lived. Saint Jose Maria Escriva says, the greatest male saint ever lived is not a deacon, not a priest, not a bishop, not a pope, not a hermit, not a monk. He was a husband, father, and a worker, referring to Saint Joseph. The founder of Opus Dei addressed affectionately Saint Joseph as Father and Lord, because he was a man ever faithful to the mission God gave him. That is why the whole church recognized Saint Joseph as patron and guardian. He protects those who revere him and accompanies them on their journey through this life, just as he protected and accompanied Jesus when he was growing up. Saint Joseph was chosen to be the husband of Mary. He was also the foster father of Jesus. He is said to have been selected by God for this role because he could be trusted to watch over them. He was inspired and guided by angels to wed Mary and escape persecution with the Christ child into Egypt. The last mention of him is with the finding in the temple during Christ's boyhood. It is believed that because he was absent from Christ's three-year ministry, he passed away in Mary and Jesus' tender arms. What little is known about the life of St. Joseph, the Gospel of Mark and Matthew revealed that St. Joseph is a direct descendant of David, who was the greatest and most famous king of Israel, therefore the rightful heir to the throne of Israel. Yet despite his royal lineage, Joseph is a humble, working man. He was a carpenter by trade and provided for his family by the sweat of his brow. St. Joseph is a direct bloodline of King David, Matthew 1, 6, 16, therefore the rightful king of Israel. Had Judah been a free and independent nation, ruled by her rightful sovereign, Joseph the carpenter would have been her crowned king, and his lawful successor is our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the Davidic kingdom, it is not the wife, but the mother is the queen. Thus, if Jesus is the king, then Mary is the queen. Therefore, Mary and Joseph are both hidden royalty. In Hebrew, the name Joseph means God will add. God adds unsuspected dimensions to the holy lives of those who do his will. He adds the one important dimension that gives meaning to everything, the divine dimension. And to the humble and holy life of Saint Joseph, he added. Saint Joseph was an ordinary sort of man whom God relied on to do great things. He did exactly what the Lord wanted him to do in every event that went to make up his life. That is why scripture praises Joseph as a just man. In Hebrew, a just man means a good and faithful servant of God, someone who fulfills the divine will, or who is honorable and charitable toward his neighbor. So a just man is someone who loves God and proves his love by keeping God's commandments and directing his whole life toward the service of his brothers and his fellow men. Joseph is frequently depicted holding a flower-bearing walking staff. This is based on the legend of how, following the death of her father, the temple priests selected a suitable spouse and guardian for the Virgin Mary. The flowering staff is reminiscent of the story of how Aaron was chosen to succeed Moses. Saint Joseph is the patron saint of many things, such as fathers, pregnant mothers, immigrants, travelers, carpenters, and working people. As we know, the first feast day of Saint Joseph is on March 19th. This date was passed down through the years and formalized by Rome in the 15th century. It was officially added to the Roman calendar in 1621. Some believe it's the date of Joseph's death, but there's no written evidence. However, in 1955, Pope Pius IX decided that there would be a second feast day for Saint Joseph. As he is known as the patron saint of workers, May 1st would be celebrated as the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. This is particularly apt, as May 1st is also the date of International Workers' Day. St. Joseph is also known Terror of Demons. Why? Because he was perfectly guarded. The great theologians had told us that even though he was not conceived without sin, not like Mary, she was the only one given that grace. But tradition tells us, small little T-knot dogma or doctrine, both Saints Joseph and John the Baptist were given special graces. Although they were conceived with sin, 
they were purified in the womb. Tradition says neither Joseph nor John the Baptist committed actual sin. What this means, that Joseph's imagination, memory, and feelings are not accessible to the demons. They're perfectly guarded, they can't see it. His power is under the control of his intellectual will, freedom, free intellect, free will. That is why all church fathers tell us that even in his earthly life, demons fear him because they consider Saint Joseph as one. They could not penetrate this intense love and pure inner life of Saint Joseph. Frightens the demons, he terrifies them because they can't see what he is up to. Demons know if we are praying to Saint Joseph, but they can't see his movements, his influence, and his tactics to help us. It's kind of like a stealth plane completely undetectable under the radar, as demons ready to attack us. But demons worried that St. Joseph attacked them because they can't see him. St. Joseph is the most terrifying enemy among mortal enemies because he is an invisible man. This is a special grace that not all saints have. Demons are constantly taken by surprise by his help of sinners because they don't know where he is what is up to, he will strike and crush them like Our Lady. He aids us in our temporal and bodily needs. He teaches the life of prayer. He directs events for our good, is all at work. No wonder throughout church history, many saints have had a special devotion to St. Joseph, crediting him for many answered prayers and their personal growth in holiness. The great doctor of the church and Bishop of Geneva, St. Francis de Sales, was not only a faithful devotee of the guardian of the Redeemer, but an avid proponent as well. He made St. Joseph the special patron of the religious order he founded, the Order of the Visitation. In addition to naming at least one of his parishes in his honor, he set Joseph as the model of the interior life and contemplative prayer for his own spiritual daughters, and in particular for the novices, who were to look upon St. Joseph as their novice master and guide. In her autobiography, the Holy Carmelite mystic and reformer sings the praises of her Holy Father, Saint Joseph, and gives proof of his powerful intercession. She said, I took for my patron and Lord the glorious Saint Joseph and recommended myself earnestly to him. I saw clearly that both out of this my present trouble and out of others of greater importance, relating to my honor and the loss of my soul, this my Father and Lord delivered me and rendered me greater services than I knew how to ask for. I cannot call to mind that I have ever asked him at any time for anything which he has not granted, and I am filled with amazement when I consider the great favors which God hath given me through this blessed saint, the dangers from which he hath delivered me both of body and soul. Saint Faustina highlights the role of the foster father of Jesus, the King of Mercy, in drawing souls to the merciful heart of God. Saint Joseph urged me to have a constant devotion to him. He himself told me to recite three prayers, the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be. He looked at me with great kindness and gave me to know how much he is supporting this work of mercy. He has promised me this special help and protection. I recite the requested prayers every day and feel his special protection. This is what Saint Jose Maria Escriva said about Saint Joseph. Some saints are privileged to extend to us their patronage with particular efficacy in certain needs, but not in others. But our holy patron Saint Joseph has the power to assist us in all cases, in every necessity, in every undertaking. Saint John Paul II said of Saint Joseph, devotion to Saint Joseph is one of the choicest graces that God can give to a soul, for it is tantamount to revealing the entire treasury of our Lord's graces. When God wishes to raise a soul to greater heights, he unites it to Saint Joseph by giving it a strong love for the good saint. The life of Saint Joseph shows us when we fix our gaze on God and choose to rely on him, even the heaviest situations can be made lighter. Remember that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him. Let us pray. O Saint Joseph, whose protection is so great so prompt, so strong, before the throne of God, I place in you all my interests and desires. 
O Saint Joseph, do assist me by your powerful intercession and obtain for me from your divine Son all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that, having engaged here below your heavenly power, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O Saint Joseph, I never weary contemplating you and Jesus asleep in your arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the kiss when I draw my dying breath. Saint Joseph, patron of departing souls, pray for me. Amen. <laughs>